Nuclear energy, one of the most deadly discoveries of the 20th century. It has caused countless deaths, suffocating miners, poisoning civilians, exploding at random and killing hundreds of thousands overall, with 41 billion in property damages. Not only that, but 4.2 million deaths are caused each year by the toxic chemicals released into the atmosphere. And, oh, wait a minute. Um, uh-oh. So, surprisingly, as it turns out, what I was describing there was, in fact, fossil fuel plants and coal plants. That's a shocker. So, nuclear, as it turns out, isn't responsible for any of that. Now, here's a fun fact. Fossil fuel plants are responsible for producing twice the amount of CO2 that the transport sector produces. So, this means that the next time you look at a diesel car driver with spite and anger, eh, uh, think again. Whilst some of you might understand how nuclear energy actually works, sadly, most people don't really understand nuclear energy. And this goes for people in positions of power, such as politicians. And that's why the word nuclear has a lot of negative connotations attached. So the one thing you really need to know about nuclear energy production is that it has nothing to do with nuclear bombs or anything of the sort. Um, now, whilst personally, I don't have anything against nuclear weapons. I think they're one of the greatest things to happen to humanity. Um, that's just my own opinion, and that's why it will be kept out of the video. And this video will have nothing to do with nuclear weapons. This is purely nuclear energy uh, production, and people need to stop confusing the two things. And it's one of the main culprits for causing uh, the word nuclear to have so many negative connotations that get dragged along with it. Now the reactor we see here on screen, just a research reactor, so it's very small, and it's not used for power production or energy production, anything of the sort, um, because it's impossible to get into one of those reactors when they're operating. But this gives you a sort of small idea of a nuclear reactor core and what it would look like. And that blue glow around it there is just uh, Cherenkov radiation which is essentially electrons traveling faster than light in water. And uh, yeah, it just looks a little cool there. Um, and it's very contradictory to the uh, misconception of nuclear things being uh, a green color. And I'm assuming that myth started because of the color of uranium ore. So Probably. yeah, if you haven't figured it out already, I think nuclear is brilliant. Uh, despite the sort of assumptions you might make about nuclear, Nuclear actually has the least amount of recorded deaths um, compared to any other energy production method, including wind turbines. Yep, that's right. Nuclear has caused less deaths than wind turbines have. Now, I will link some of this stuff in the description, but if you'd like to do some further research yourselves, then I'd, uh, I'd sort of encourage that. So you might find some interesting stuff there. Now, there are many different elements you can use to produce nuclear energy. Um, the one we use today, most commonly, is uranium-235. Now, this is basically just a simple fission reaction. Uh, the heavy element gets split into lighter elements, releasing energy, heating water, and spinning a bunch of turbines. Now, uh, the biggest concern people usually have with fission reactors, uh, such as the uranium-235 reactor, is the fact that they leave behind a lot of nuclear waste and when the plant eventually has to shut down the amount of nuclear waste is well let's just say it there's quite a lot of it right because the whole plant basically even even the brick walls surrounding the reactor are considered nuclear waste so yeah i guess you could say there's a lot of nuclear waste left behind and this seems to be one of the largest concerns of climate activists but i'll put these concerns to sleep
So then it seems like it's down to reactor meltdowns and nuclear waste. And let's begin with the easiest of the two to debunk. So reactor meltdowns are used very commonly to taint nuclear energy and nuclear power plants in general. And this, this can be sort of attributed to disasters such as Fukushima and Chernobyl. Now, Chernobyl was the worst disaster in nuclear history, and for a relatively new uh, method of energy production, uh, it's actually not too bad of a track record. So let's look at Chernobyl then, and let's see how bad it actually was in, uh, in the scope of things. So around 50 deaths were caused by the actual disaster itself, and this could have gone up to about 100 a few days after the disaster due to uh, radiation poisoning and other injuries. Of course, it is claimed that a few thousand people may have actually been affected by the radiation uh, released by the accident, uh, but of course these numbers are very difficult to actually track down and pinpoint, and it could have really just been, it could range from a couple of thousand to maybe even tens of thousands, but there's no real solid evidence to support the fact that Chernobyl's directly responsible for any more than a few thousand um, people being affected by radiation poisoning. There's no real evidence to prove that any more than a few thousand people were actually affected. Now, those friendly little windmills you call wind turbines, <laughs> get this, they kill 1,000 people per trillion kilowatt hours of energy. Now, compare this to the, let's see, let's see what nuclear has here, let's see the amount of deaths that nuclear causes per trillion kilowatt hours of energy. Uh, it's about zero, zero deaths. Now, Chernobyl was the largest nuclear accident in history. Uh, the technology was very new and the reactor had been built very, very badly by the Soviets. So all of this will remain history, luckily for us, and no such accident will ever happen again. Uh, it is, it's virtually impossible for something like that to happen to a modern nuclear power plant. Uh, Fukushima was nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl, but it did cause some considerable damage. But even Fukushima was due to poor design and just very badly placed generators and that can be prevented very very easily and Fukushima didn't even cause that much damage as much as the media bloats it way out of proportion Fukushima was quite a mild accident and when you compare that to the deaths caused by other power sources like fossil fuels and even wind it's nothing it's non-existent it's a tiny blip in history and now to finish off it would be fantastic if we could just switch to fission energy and get rid of most other energy production methods. Maybe keep solar panels around for that extra bit of uh, solar energy. That wouldn't hurt anyone, of course. At least until we discover how to make fusion more profitable. And by switching to nuclear, we'll be virtually removing half of all CO2 production. Now, just to quickly finish off with nuclear waste here, uh, you get the same bogus media articles popping up time and time again, and they all mention the same issue, nuclear waste. The thing about nuclear waste is that most of the cost of disposing nuclear waste does come from fear-mongering, and uh, it's true to the media, so all of these extra precautions have to be put in place, but that makes it even safer. And now, permanent nuclear waste facilities are starting to pop up. Uh, there's one in Finland called Alkiluoto. Uh, forgive my pronunciation there. And these nuclear waste facilities, well, the one in Finland especially, that nuclear waste can sit there for tens of thousands of years, perfectly safe. It's pretty much impossible to access or remove. And after 10,000 years, most of that waste will have decayed and... It won't be anywhere near as dangerous. It'll basically, it'll be exactly the same as every other uranium rock in our crust currently that we've evolved to live with. Uh, it won't be a problem anymore, basically. 
Not to mention that this single storage facility can pretty much store every single bit of nuclear waste produced by humanity uh, so far. And that's because there's so little nuclear waste actually produced, especially as modern reactors begin to have the ability to recycle nuclear waste. Of course, not to mention thorium, and that's gonna have even less nuclear waste. And you know the story there. And maybe one day in the future, we'll find out how to make fusion profitable. And then that'll be that. That'll be humanity sorted for, well, forever. Until we build a Dyson Sphere, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the video. See you later, hopefully.